Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed part one. It's a bit rough and ready, and I still haven't found my tripod, so excuse the shakiness of the camera and all that, but I thought we'd do another one today, and I'm set up for it now. So what we're gonna talk about is drill sizes and, and holes and depths. It sounds silly on something so relatively simple, but it does affect what bees will use it, how they use it, and how much uh, effectiveness you'll get out of the habitat. And it's questions I always get every time um so drill sizes on this one i'm using a mixture of six drill sizes i've got a 10 four and a half and a two and a half or two actually yes you will get micro bees using this size and smaller i've got you know campanula arm will use the middle one there but yeah there are 224 species in the uk and uh, there you'll happily see a, ra a wide range of those if you use different drill sizes and then on another two sides so you would get leaf cutters using the 10 mil as well uh, and then i've got an eight a five and a three and a half so you'd have your mason bees here and again smaller size bees using uh, those smaller size drills of course you might get smaller and younger mason bees and leaf cutter bees actually using you know uh, six mil so you could use those basically rule of thumb is as many different sizes as you can put in a habitat the range needs to be quite diverse now depth wise the longer the better i have these which are fantastic but the trouble is if you're using a hand drill the longer the drill bit the more wiggle you'll get at the end because no drill head is is perfect a, a pillar drill will make that better and they're pretty stable in here but not everyone's got that and i appreciate that but yeah rule of thumb is as long as you can get out of the drill bit while still holding it firmly in the chuck, if that's the right word, I think it's a chuck, uh, the better. So, so I, you can see here, I use loads of different sizes. I just make one, I think, right, I use eight different sizes in this and it's absolutely fine. So, and, uh, okay, so drill speeds. Slower the better, okay? The slower you do the drill speed, the less likely you are of getting furring both on the outside and the inside of the hole. However, the smaller the drill bit, the faster you can go and quite safely. So if you're doing like three mil drills, you can ramp it up to 2000 RPM. I tend to keep mine at 1000 RPM because it's a mid range. But if I'm using Forstner bits, which are these things here to recess areas to drill into, then you really need to slow the drill head down to around 525, this kind of speed for an inch and then even slower for two inch, you know. I've got quite a few Forstner bits and if you just if you do them on 2000 rpm or even a thousand you'll just get burning like we got with the cross saw uh, the chop saw which is no good so because it just doesn't look nice and it take you forever you're spinning around and not getting anywhere but i tend to leave mine at a thousand rpm which will cover all the drill sizes up to 12 mil okay so let's look at where we got to last night so we we finished cutting them what you want to do is when you're drilling make a, a clamp a big block of these together all lined up clamp them together because then you've got instead of just one piece that can rock around you've got like four together if you're doing sides this is obviously you might be doing into a solid block of wood which is fine so clamp them together and that also makes it nice and easy to mark you can put your marks on you don't have to have all neat marks and, and do them all neat like i do you could just randomly put holes in it's absolutely fine but if we're going to make them into a piece of art as well then i always line them up and then it makes it easier to put the lines in so that's phase one and you can see here i've drilled these and they look quite nice the drills are quite neat there's some furring on the outside i've also marked a second line on each side for the smaller drill sizes so that's after you've initially drilled it and it looks all right it's not perfect but once you sand it it comes up lovely and you can see at that speed, 1,000 RPM, you're getting really, really clean holes, especially in oak. If you can get some recycled oak, you're in business. So that's where we are. You know, I've finished drilling now, and then we'll join them all together and then we'll take another look. Okay, so it's all done. Oak's a little bit harder to drill into, so it takes a little bit more time. And also I made a mistake, I put a big hole where a small hole should be. So I had to sand it down a lot more just to make it neat. All this doesn't really matter. As long as you've got nice, decently cut holes in the right elevation, 
right orientation, right sizes, you'll get these. And you're obviously, we cover food plants later and host plants and stuff for these. And you need something to attract them there in the first place, but that's another story. When you finish drilling, always make sure you turn them over and bang them out because uh, you know, look, you'll see there's loads of stuff in there. The bees will excavate to a degree, but um, you know, they might miss your hole and go somewhere else if it's too much work if there's a nice hole somewhere else so you know um, I use a little uh, little hammer to uh, to tap them from underneath and it gets all the the small holes empty because you, you see here they're really full up so you need to give them a good bang and all this stuff will come out just makes it easy you can do it at the end you don't have to do it now but so next thing we're going to do is to attach these together onto a base plate uh, I use base plates more for logs than anything else and when i say base plate it's the thing at the back that holds it all together on a log you would think well it's already a log it doesn't need a base plate but it stops it splitting it doesn't stop it splitting it slows it from splitting because logs especially softwood will naturally split when they're in the sun and getting warm and cold and wet and dry but if you've got a back plate of wood that you've screwed in it just holds it together for longer and I've had logs that have last I've got 10 years and they've got tiny splits in but nothing nothing bad whereas before the log was completely splitting often in, in two almost so again it is only aesthetics really the bees will still come but if the splits are going across holes they won't so uh, it's a nice little tip to put a back, a back plate on a log I'm putting it on here just to give me something to attach these two to make them nice and stable so we'll do that now so there you have it, it's all been screwed together and I've recessed the screws here uh, which are just pulling the tops into each other so it's nice and flush, well, as flush as I could get it and then I've doweled and glued those and then underneath I've got eight stainless steel screws holding the back plate on and then obviously the middle is going to be full of the bamboo. So yeah I use, I put zinc screws in here because the dowels are going to cover them up but normally for uh, for external stuff, I suggest using where are they? Oh no, that was right. Stainless steel screws because I mean the shear force isn't as good as in the, the force across the screw, and they will break. They're not as strong, but they obviously don't rust. So they're really good screws if you're not using it for heavy load, and also you're not putting too much pressure on when you're screwing them in because they'll break off sometimes. But for this, it was perfect. So. Yeah, all done. It's got some tidying up to do once all the glue sets. So in part three, we'll fill it with bamboo and uh, do the roof, I guess, and then finishing off. Cheers, guys.